Welcome back to Menopause Taylor, my friends. I should actually address you as my students because this is really Menopause University. You've tuned into video 197, and it is the second tutorial in our unit on osteoporosis. The previous video was about the definition of osteoporosis. In my book, Osteoporosis is all of chapter 29, but Today's topic is not depicted as a standalone section in the book. So you need to pay attention to this video. <laughs> and no matter how much you think you already know about the definition of osteoporosis, go back and watch that video before watching this one. It's really important to watch all of my videos in order. Today, we're gonna to talk about your bones from puberty to menopause. Now. That may sound kind of strange. You may be thinking, what in the world do my bones care about puberty and menopause? <laughs> well, if that's your thought, you definitely need to watch this video. And even if you aren't wondering why your bones have anything to do with puberty or menopause, this video will help you understand osteoporosis a lot. It has been said that osteoporosis is a pediatric disease with geriatric consequences. In other words, the status of your bones at puberty greatly affects your risk for osteoporosis at menopause. In the last video, I explained that your bones function like a conveyor belt. A conveyor belt involves adding new things to one end of the belt and discarding old things at the other end. Well, your bones are operated by a conveyor belt. They are constantly turning over. Old bone is replaced by new bone. And today, we're gonna talk about how what you put on the front end of your bone conveyor belt determines what you get on the back end of your bone conveyor belt. And the front end of your bone conveyor belt is puberty, while the back end is menopause. I also like to think of your bones as a bank account. You know, your bank account, it consists of both deposits and withdrawals. The more deposits you make, the better it is. But you also make withdrawals. And the more withdrawals you make, the worse it is. And it just so turns out that puberty is all about the deposits, while menopause is all about the withdrawals. The more money you deposit when you're young, the better your balance is when you're old. And the better your balance is when you're old, the better your money will take care of you in your old age, right? Well, guess what? The very same thing is true of your bones. So let me take you through a sequence of events that creates this inextricable link between puberty and menopause with regard to your bones. Before puberty, your bones are both growing and turning over on your conveyor belt. And the process is very balanced. That's why you grow very steadily during childhood. But you know how there's a growth spurt associated with puberty? That's when you get a few inches or many centimeters taller in just a couple of years. It's when your mom complains that she just bought you those pants and you've already outgrown them. It's when you go to school and the kids tease you about wearing high waters or waiting for a flood when you wear those pants. It happens to your shoes too. Suddenly they're all too small. You literally, quite literally, stretch during puberty. Everything gets longer. Well, that growth spurt is due to the appearance of estrogen. Before you hit puberty, you hardly have any estrogen in your body, and any that's there is very inactive. But it's just waiting to burst out of captivity and spew all over your body to mark the onset of puberty. And when it does, you grow. And guess what happens to your bones? 
they grow too. They start growing and getting more dense, all because of the arrival of estrogen. And it's not just for a short time. This increase in your bone mass continues until you're between the ages of 25 and 30. So your peak bone mass occurs when you're 25 to 30. That's when your bone is the best it will ever be. Now let's pause here for just a bit. What do you think happens? if you do something to affect your bone mass at the time of puberty. Let's say you're anorexic. Well, anorexia involves having so little body fat that you don't produce enough estrogen. And if you don't produce enough estrogen during puberty, your bones never get the nudge they need to achieve normal peak bone mass. The same is true for bulimia. Or let's say you have a childhood disease for which you need to take steroids. Well, steroids inhibit bone growth. So you may not achieve a normal peak bone mass in that instance either. Or let's say you're an extreme athlete, you know, an Olympian who exercises for five hours a day. Well, that can interfere with attaining normal peak bone mass too. Or what if you're malnourished due to starvation or too much junk food or caffeine or alcohol? They can all result in suboptimal peak bone mass. So this is why puberty is on the front end of the conveyor belt for your bones. Puberty determines what goes on your bone conveyor belt in the first place. It's the difference between putting four bones on the conveyor belt versus just one bone on the conveyor belt. Or if you prefer the bank account analogy, puberty determines how many early deposits you put into your bone bank account, early deposits. It's the difference between depositing 50% of your monthly income into savings versus just 10% of your monthly income into savings. Okay, moving on. The next phase of your life is your adult reproductive life. This spans the time from age 25 until you hit menopause. And what happens to your bones then? Well, this is where the difference between new bone and old bone is in balance again. Your bone density remains stable. You stop growing like you did when you were a kid. And you have regular menstrual cycles with plenty of estrogen floating around about your body to keep your bones nice and dense. So your entire reproductive life is a time when your bone conveyor belt is very predictable and very stable. Or if you prefer the bank account analogy, the deposits balance your withdrawals. They're equivalent. But then you hit menopause. Now, reflect back on the fact that at puberty, when estrogen came on the scene, your bones got more dense. And during your reproductive years, estrogen kept them dense. Well, at menopause, you lose your estrogen. It disappears. So what do you think that does to your bone mass? It causes it to decrease. In other words, you lose bone. In the last video, you learned that the definition of osteoporosis is bone loss, and it's all because of estrogen loss. So your bone conveyor belt starts removing more bone on the back end. So you start losing four bones here for every one bone that was added. And the result is that the conveyor belt 
ends up with very little bone on it. And once again, if you prefer the bank account analogy, it's when your withdrawals outnumber your deposits. That's the difference. So in contrast to the growth spurt you had at puberty, what happens at menopause? You start shrinking. Your height decreases. You go from tall to shorter, right? We all talk about how we shrink. Way back in video, video tutorial number six, I taught you that menopause is puberty in reverse. Puberty is when the light switch to your reproductive life turns on. And menopause is when the light switch to your reproductive life turns off. Both are due to estrogen. In essence, your bone density rises about 20% with puberty and decreases about 20% within the very first few years of menopause. So now you see why your bones are so controlled by estrogen. It's like the estrogen on off switch. Your bones get more dense when estrogen appears and they get less dense when estrogen disappears. The result of all this is that your risk for osteoporosis skyrockets at the time of postmenopause when you lose your estrogen. You could say that your skeletal reserves decline in parallel with your ovarian reserves. So menopause really is puberty in reverse in a number of ways. I think understanding osteoporosis from this perspective really helps you realize what a big deal it is. So to summarize, the appearance of estrogen at puberty causes your bones to increase in quantity and become more dense. They reach a peak bone density at between the ages of 25 and 30. Then they stay dense throughout your entire reproductive life. But at menopause, when you lose your estrogen, you also lose bone. And that loss of bone is called osteoporosis. You see, I have a problem with the fact that everyone talks about hot flashes instead of osteoporosis if and when they discuss menopause. This is the stuff that matters. That's why I cover it before I ever start talking about hot flashes. <laughs> okay, ladies, that is it for today. Join me in a week when I'll teach you about how common osteoporosis is. And if you need a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, don't hesitate to schedule one, especially if you've had anorexia or bulimia or anything like that, it's really easy. You just go to menopausetaylor.me where you can choose your time and how much time you want and schedule it. And be sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to my channel and I'll say goodbye for now. Bye. Bye.